2 Kings chapter 7. Then Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now remember, there's a famine. No food. I guys see. Excuse me. No food. They're eating ass's head and dove's dung. Doo doo. I gotta say doo doo because some idiots think it's wheat and all that other junk. But we, God knows and the Holy Spirit knows. Then a Lord, who lean, whose hand leaned, a, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned. So this is a guy in charge. He, he's putting affairs of the king. Answered the man of God, that's Elisha, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. Now he's he's mocking God. What you just said, Elijah, impossible. It's not going to happen. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. You didn't mess with Elijah. You didn't get him angry. You didn't backtalk him. Man, he'd come back and get you. And there were four leprous men, unclean, at the entering of the gate, Leviticus 13, 4. We're going we're gonna to see something here that you wouldn't think you would see. Leviticus 13, 4. We're going in the law. Leviticus 13, 4. Leviticus 13, 4. Is that one? Maybe 13. 13, 45. Excuse me. 13, 45. It's 45, not 4 and 5. All right, 45. Thir Leviticus 13, 45. And a leper, in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare. He shall put on a covering upon his upper lip, his finger, and shall cry, Unclean unclean and in his days wherein the plague shall be in him he shall be defiled he is unclean he shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be so we're in samaria they're not doing right they will not ever do right you got a king who's involved in jeroboam's religion he's involved in baal's religion he's involved in religion he is just oh they're obeying the law aren't they here is four leprous men and where are they they're standing outside the gate they're not allowed in the city so they know what the law is they're only nitpicking they're looking at certain parts of scripture for a sampler. They're looking at part of this scripture because we like this. But other parts of scripture like idolatry. Oh, we don't want that. We'll even take that out of the Ten Commandments. And make ten, number ten into two of them. Oh, we got Ten Commandments. So here's a law in effect. In a God forsaken area that God's giving them a famine. And there were four leprous men at the entering the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? What hope does a leper, he's unclean. He would have to survive on people giving them money and food, but you couldn't touch him. You would probably say, okay, I'm, I'm going to put some stuff over here. Stay there. I know you're unclean. And I take off, come and get it. Something like that. Family members, poor. And if we say we shall enter into the city, you can't. You can't say that. Then the famine is in the city. Okay, famine's still on. And we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Everything we're going to do, we're going to die. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, look at chapter 5 verse 1. Now Naaman, the captain and host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, because he, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man in valor, but, uh, but he was a leper. 
The Syrians didn't care. If you could have been used to the Syrian country and you had leprosy, come. Naaman had something to do. He was a mighty warrior. He was honorable, but he was a leper. And these four men here that are leprosy Jews outside of Syria. Let's go to the Syrians. They may take care of us. Though you may, listen, leprosy is, is like AIDS. It's something you can spread. It's like the flu. You can spread it. Syrians then, you know, hey, hey, and these leprous men, maybe they had a job. Maybe they had a position. Maybe they had something that the Assyrian, that's what they're looking to. If there's something we can do that the Syrians could use us, they'll take us. So now, therefore, come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, they'll have that they have some kind of use for us. We shall live. If they kill us, we shall die. We shall but die. <laughs> what an outcome! <laughs> death, death. Wherever we do, there may be death. And they rose up in the twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. Remember, they're camped all around Syria. I mean, Samaria. They're like, all right, let's go. Let's go see them. See what they'll do for us. And when they were come to the outermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. They entered into the, into the military camp. Where, where, what's going on here? What? What's happening? Where are the troops? They didn't pass us going into the city. They all didn't go to the bathroom. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians. Now this is a mighty army. Cruel. Great with weaponry. To hear a noise of chariots. And a noise of horses. Even the noise of a great host. They have a fear of nothing. God put a sound in their ears. Oh, what's that? Here comes an army. And they said one to another. This is what the sound sounded like. Lo, the king of Israel is hired against us, the king of the Hittites, the king of the Egyptians, to come upon us. So what God made them here is like three or four armies are coming after them. God's protecting them, even though they're they're a wicked nation, even though the king is wrong. God is still protecting this nation because you got Elijah doing right. We run into people who are doing right. So because the king is wrong, doesn't mean the nation is wrong. Wherefore, they rose and fled the twilight. Just before these guys get up and leave, God sees those four lepers get up. Wake up, rubbing their eyes. All right, let's go. And that moment they say, let's go. God says, here comes horses. Here comes battle. Here comes chariot. Oh, run. And they left their tents. They didn't pack up. They didn't roll up the tents. Everything in the tents, whatever they had in there, the cooking, the, the, the armor, the, the weapons, the food, they left there in the tents. And I've had the privilege, and if you ever had the privilege to go to a, a, a civil war or revolutionary war thing where they uh, reenactment, and they ha they have the camps there, you know, imitation of the camp. But you see in those tents, I mean, were there books, were there cooking, was there their their furnace, their heater, was there goods, were there clothing, was there cot, was there letters from from mom, was the their money? It, it's all there. Including the tent. And their horses. They ran so quick. They didn't jump on their horses. And take off on the horses. They, that's that's scared. When you don't saddle your horse. Or jump up in your horse. Bareback I think they call it. And take off on the horses. They're just running. And you got to wonder at this thing. I mean when they walk in the tent. I mean is there eggs cooking right there? <laughs> is it almost like a rapture? Of the church, that whatever you were doing, boom, they're gone. That's what kind of fear God put into them. And their asses. 
even the camp as it was and fled for their life. That's interesting. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat. See, there's the food. And drink. There's the water. There's the wine. There's whatever they drank. And carry thence silver and gold. There's their money. They open up their wallets. <laughs> and raiment. There's their clothing. In the tents, there's food. There's drink. There's silver. There's gold. There's raiment. The only thing they left was the clothes on their back. And some of them ran off naked. And went and hid it. So they go into the tent, they get all the stuff, and they go hide the stuff they get. Sort of like what uh, Achan did. And came again and entered to another tent. All right, now they're in another tent. Ooh, food, yummy, clothes, food, money. And carried thence also and went and hid it. These guys are making out. They're enjoying it. They're like, whoa, this is great. This is spoiling, by the way. This is in the Bible spoiling. When you win the victory, you win the battle, you go into the enemies and you take everything is there. That's what they're doing. They're spoiling the Assyrians. Then they said one to another. And you just imagine, they're, they're probably sitting in a chair right now, full, right? And then we're going to lay in that, that cot over there. We do not well. What do you mean? You got gold, you got silver, you got red mint, you got food, you got water. This day is a day of good tidings. That's the gospel. Gospel means good news. Tidings means news. So it's always the gospel about Jesus Christ being uh, uh, suffering and dying according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again according to... No. In the tribulation period, there says an angel is preaching the everlasting gospel. So somebody says everywhere in the gospel, everywhere in the Bible, the gospel is about Jesus suffering and dying. Not for these guys. Their gospel, their good news is, hey, we got food, we got wine, we got gold, we got silver, we got clothes. Look at all the goods we got. And we hold our peace. We're not we're not telling anybody. If we tarry, I mean, yeah, if we tarry to the morning light. So it was twilight, less than 24 hours. I don't know how long they've been doing this, but less than 24 hours. Some mischief will come upon us. What they're saying, you know, what they believe here is, if we don't do a good deed, if we do not help others, we're going to get it in the neck. So see that, doc see that doctrine that people... It's this says BC 892. Do good unto others, help your fellow man. BC 892. To four leprous men who have been out, outcast by God, by the law, by the city. And here God's blessing these four guys. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Well, you can't go in that you can't go in that city. So they came and called unto the porter of the city. Now Jesus says the Holy Spirit in John chapter 10 is the porter. That's the man that stands at the gate. That's the man to say, I want to see your credentials. You want somebody, you want to stop the illegal people coming to America? You need to put a porter everywhere where they can come in. That's the guy's job. We want to come into uh, Samaria. What, what, what's your business? Okay. Who are you? What's your goods? How long are you going to be here? Listen, the passport is BC 892. You've seen the, you know, the, I don't know if you've ever been through the passport in different countries or, if, you know, you've seen it on television. The fact is who you are, what you are, what you're doing, how long you're going to be here. It's, it's in the Bible. That's the porter's job. He would not just let anybody and everybody into that city. And they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man. So they heard nothing. I don't know if they got crickets over there, but you heard the crickets, if there were crickets. But horses tied. 
No one even tried to untie the horses. No one tried to get on that. They just ran. The ass is tied. And the tents, as they were. That implication there, as they were, I would, I'm going to assume, you can throw this in the garbage can, I'm going to assume this is a type of rapture. Like I said, there's eggs cooking on the fire. Pancakes, whatever they're making, whatever they're cooking. And you got to wonder, with those with those leprous men that are unclean already, were there sausages there and pork? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> we're unclean. Let's see what this food tastes like. Now, that's assumption. You don't have to believe that part. But as they were, would the implication would be, if that guy was writing a letter to, to home, that letter was dropped on the ground, that guy was changing his clothes, whatever was left there, he's gone. They even had their animals still tied up. And he called the porters. That's the first time that word shows up. Porters. That's plural. And they told it to the king's house within. So the four lepers men come. The porter, however they do it, ring the door. I don't know. Yes, we, uh, wait a minute. Unclean, unclean. All right, stay back. What do you want? We don't give you food to two. Uh, no, I, I'm just saying. You got to hear what we what we just found out. Unclean. Well, what'd you find out? And then they tell the story. And he's like, you guys stay out there. And he, hey, porters, he get supported. All the porters. These, you know those four lepers outside that gate? Yeah. This is their story. And the king arose in the night. So it's nighttime. It's after 6 p.m. It has been over 12 hours since those guys left at twilight. 6 a.m. Nighttime is after 6 p.m. in Jewish time. Those guys were out there for a while gathering. And he said to his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Okay. So they've been there for a while. Running out of asses. You notice how they're eating asses' heads? And yet the Lord's left asses there tied up and, and ready to take them and use them to work. Asses were used to work in the fields and travel. Therefore are they going out of the camp to hide themselves in the field. It's a decoy. It's a trick. It's a battle tactic. All right, guys, they've been in that city long enough. They're starving. Let's everybody get out of the camp. Let's go hide. And when they're in here enjoying everything we got, then we got them. When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get onto them the city. So what he's saying is the tactic here is an ambushment. We're going to go out of the city and then they're going to they're surround us and we're dead. And they're going to go into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain. The horses are dying. So God has given them horses and asses, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of Israelites that are in, that are consumed. The horses are dying just like the people. Parentheses. That's an important note. When you see parentheses, that's an important information. The horses and the people are dropping dead in the streets. And they're probably eating the horses too. Maybe even eating the people. We had a, we had a mother, two mothers eating a son. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of Syria, saying, Go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels. They are running the Syrians. I mean, Syrian, the, the Syrians. They are running and they're dropping their stuff as they're running to lighten their load. This is too heavy to carry. <laughs> oh man, get rid of this. Garments, clothes, and vessels, pots, pans, vases. 
which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. They're not just running, they're running. And the messenger returned and told the king, Hey, you're not going to believe it, but it's a true story. And the people went out. So it's published throughout the, the city. And spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So see, there's that spoil. It's taken from the enemy. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. This is what they're finding in the camp. According to the word of the Lord. So as the word of the Lord, it happened. And the king appointed the Lord whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. Oh, there's that guy that mocked the Lord. Let's see what happens to him. And the people trod him down, trod upon him in the gate. He's in charge of the gate. He stayed in that gate. And he was run over by the mass of people. He was trampled upon. And he died. As the man of God, Elijah, had said, who spanked when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of some Now, this is important. This is very this is something that's been repeated twice. And when God repeats it twice, it's important. What is this important for us? If God says it, you better not mock God. And there are pe plenty of people when you have any public ministry, they mock God. And one day they're going to be held liable for what they do. It's no laughing matter. It's very serious business. And it's almost like, I think, again, this is I think, you don't have to believe it, but I believe at the, at the great white throne judgment, that guy's going to say, well, I never heard. I never knew. I believe those gospel tracts, that preaching, that door knocking, maybe the good carols, maybe being invited to a church, whatever the witness of the gospel that that God gave to that man, I think it's going to be played back again. I don't know. And the Lord answered the man of God. This is the one that dropped dead, being run over by the people. Now behold, if the Lord shall make windows in heaven, this is mockery, might such a thing be? And he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes. He's watching all the people run out. He's watching the people come back and bring in all the stuff. But shall not eat thereof. He's trampled. He's dead. Wouldn't it be funny if he had food and stuff dropped around him, his dead body? They're trampling, you know, they're dropping grapes and whatever they have. That'd be funny. That's the Lord. And so it fell out of him, for the people trolled upon him in the gate, and he died. Don't mock God. Don't make fun of God and his word. You will call to answer again one day.